my goodness, y'all. The camera turned itself on. I, I didn't even reach over there and turn it on. I thought that y'all got to see me blowing my nose. I may be getting a drink of water, too. I was getting ready to start talking to you, and I looked up, and the camera's already going. Let me get started. Let me tell you what first. That football game with Nicole and her son playing, but Nicole wasn't playing, her son was playing. Nicole was sitting right next to me. And y'all, that's the first time I have climbed up and sat down on bleachers in very many years. And I didn't take a, I didn't take my walker, you know, because you, you can't have a walker on bleachers. But I walked to the door with my four-prong walking cane and just like I got the door, I told her I'm going to walk on my own. I'm not going to take my walking cane, and I didn't. And goodness gracious, y'all, we got there just minutes before the game started, so that meant there were no close parking spots. <laughs> she said she would drive me up to the bleachers and then her go back and park and then walk up. I told her, no, I'll walk with you. So. She parked way out by the road, and we walked up there together, and then I had to walk up the bleachers, and that was a challenge. I thank God they had a handrail in between the two sets of bleachers I could hold on to and kind of pull myself up each step, but I made it, and I had a wonderful time. I'm glad I went. It was fun, and her son did excellent. He made some great tackles. One one guy on the opposing team was <clears throat> all alone. Well, th there were no boys from my team, from our team, from the home team around him, but he was surrounded with the, with his own team and he was running for the goal line and he was pretty far ahead of the home team and Nicole's son, phew, like lightning, came out there, he went right through that uh, bunch of the opposing team, caught the guy with the ball and brought him to the ground, and they never made any progress after that. It was awesome. I wish I'd have had that on video, but I didn't do any video. I just took a few pictures and posted them over at my community page whenever I got home, if y'all want to go look at them. and, and our team won 48 to 14 or 48 to 16, something like that. Whatever score I posted, I, I took a picture of the scoreboard with a minute and something left, and the score didn't change after that. So whatever score is posted over at my community page, that was the final score, and we won. Ooh. All right, that's that. <coughs> oh, and when we got back, to my house, uh, I was going to go in the back door, and Nicole pulled up to my back door. My driveway is L-shaped. It comes up the side of the house and then goes out the back of the house, and she pulled up, and I had my truck parked right by the back door from yesterday when I unloaded all that those cases of water and and I stopped at the grocery store and had four or five bags of groceries. And so I just parked right by the back door because the back door leads into the kitchen where all the groceries go. And then on the other side of the kitchen to the left is my storeroom where I store all the water. So that was the closest place. So my truck was sitting there and Nicole pulled her SUV right up to my truck and she and I got out and came in, and her husband, show, her ex-husband, showed up. <laughs> He's never been here before. It kind of surprised me, and she went outside as soon as she saw him. She went outside, and <clears throat> I, I stood at the door, and then I walked to the edge of the porch because he looked like he was mad. And they'd been divorced for a pretty good while since before I met her. Uh, but 
I guess everything was all right. She didn't stay long. She got in her SUV and left after that. And I sent her a text and asked her if she was okay. And she said, yeah. So well, I, I thought there was going to be trouble, but there wasn't. Thank God. All right, let me get started. <clears throat> oh, and the fan's been blowing on my Bible turning pages for me. There we are. We're going to do chapter 13 of Revelation. And it's just going to be the one chapter this time because it's, I don't remember how long it is, but the next chapter after it, 14, is long. And I'm not, I'm tired and I am just about ready to get ready for bed. I am tired. But it was a great day and a wonderful way to get tired. Thank God for everything. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 13. Let me, <clears throat> I don't know if I can clear my throat with a drink or not, but let me try. I checked to make sure I had my earpiece in. I thought I did because I've been listening to sermons ever since I got home from the ball game. But the, the picture that I'm looking at is so uh, dark, I can't see if I got my earbud in or not. And it's there and it's got a microphone, so hopefully, y'all can see better. Kitty Kelly's standing right between me and the camera. You can't see her, but she's there. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Are you going to see her tail? She's walking by now. Well, she stopped to look around, I guess. There you go. You got to see her tail. Chapter 13 of Revelation. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. This is during the tribulation that we're talking about now. A period you do not want to be here, friend. And the only way to not be here is to become a Christian right now, today, and get raptured out of here when Christ comes for his church, the true believers. And it could be at any moment, so that's why I say you need to become a Christian right now, because it could be tonight. We don't know when it's going to be. Jesus doesn't even know. Only God knows. God is going to tell his son, Jesus, son, go get your bride. And that's going to be it, y'all. It'll be too late. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast." The beast is the Antichrist, if I understand it correctly. He's trying to imitate Jesus. When Jesus was crucified and rose from the dead, it says he, he was wounded to death and his deadly wound was healed. So he's trying to imitate Jesus so everybody will think that he is the Messiah, not Jesus. And many will be deceived and believe. And they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And then you know what happens. The good part happens, but I'm not going to tell you. We're going to read it here. 
And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. He hates us, y'all. That's no lie. He doesn't dislike us. He hates us. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. It was given unto him. He didn't have the power on his own. It was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And the saints they're talking about here are the tribulation saints. Because the saints prior to the commencement of the tribulation got raptured out of here. A lot of people get confused there. It's pre-tribulation saints, which is me, and I hope you. And then there's tribulation saints. So they're tr talking about the tribulation saints here. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. <clears throat> And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And that is Jesus. Jesus is the Lamb of life that was slain before the foundation of the earth. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And who is this beast that they're talking about? It's the false prophet. And I have a pretty good hunch who the false prophet is. I got no idea who the, well I have an idea, but it's not a good idea, it's just an idea on who the Antichrist is. And it's somebody that I just started paying attention to lately, and I believe that this person is him. But I, I'm 99% sure I know who the false prophet is. Well, let me continue. He, and he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And if you get left behind, friend, do not take the mark that is signing a pact with the devil and you'll go to hell. And 
continuing on talking about the uh, mark of the beast that they put in your right hand or your forehead. It says that no man might buy or sell save he have that mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six, or six, six, six. That's chapter 13, and I'm done, y'all. I, after I got back from the ball game, I cooked my own supper. It's not one of the meals that somebody else cooked. It was one that moi cooked. And it was delicious. Uh, I did take a picture of it, and I'm going to post that picture over at my community page. So y'all go check out my community page. I've got not a lot posted today. I did some today. I think I did some scriptures earlier over there and some pictures from the football game and I'm going to put a picture of my supper. And I've got a lot more to put there. I just have kind of been busy lately. I had a housekeeper that was supposed to come yesterday morning. She didn't show up. I texted her today and asked her what happened and she said, oh, I was waiting for you to invite me. I thought we made an agreement. I told her to come over any time that I'd be here. But she never showed up and she was waiting for me to invite her. So I said, well, today I said, well, you're invited. Anytime you will come, come. The dirt's going to be here until you get here, and I hope it's all gone. The place don't look bad, you know. Nicole came in today, and she didn't fuss about anything, so it's not bad. But it could be better. All right, y'all, I could sit here and talk to y'all all night. I just don't have anybody to talk to this time of the day. Anyway, I'm going to bed early. I'm tired. My back is screaming at me. I mean, screaming at me. So, I think it'll be happy to lay down. It's it's sure not happy sitting up. It's been sitting up too much today and sitting on aluminum bleachers for two or three hours didn't make it happy. It was okay till I got there, and that's when it started hurting. But that's that for now, y'all. I enjoyed my time with you. I thank you for my time with you and I thank you all who are faithful viewers here. Y'all are my family. Y'all are all the family I got and I appreciate and I love every one of you and every one of you gets prayed for every day. And if any of you have special re prayer requests, they get covered by me also and prayer. And y'all, there is much, much, much power in prayer and in faith. When we pray, we must pray believing. That means we must have faith in the prayers that we pray. So don't just, you know, off the cuff say a prayer for healing or whatever pray it with meaning pray it believing that your great physician or you know our God is going to take care of it he wants to take care of it he doesn't want us in a turmoil all the time so believe in prayer and do it do it often and he God loves prayer of thanksgiving. And I guarantee you what, He gives us so much. We could spend hours every day just doing prayers of thanksgiving to Him.
think that's all. I, I'm waiting to see if my brain thinks of something else to talk about. <laughs> I think my brain wants to go to bed too. It's not thinking real good now. So I'll let y'all go. It got hot today. It wasn't hot to me. It was funny. Nicole was burning up. It, it got up to 94 degrees, which is a typical day down on my Texas Gulf Coast. I'm used to that. And, I actually miss that kind of weather, the 90s and the low 100s. I, I would work outside in that kind of weather all day long down there. And it, it never bothered me. And the cold doesn't like it. But anyway, it was warmer than usual, so I got the air conditioner running. I'm fixing to turn it off, though. It's getting down to, I don't remember if it said 48 or 46 tonight. And so this house will be cold when I wake up tomorrow. It, I'll, and, well, I start saying my bed. I don't sleep in bed. I sleep on the couch right over behind me because I can't get in my bed. But the, the couch is very comfortable. Man, I sleep good on that couch. I can, it's long. I can stretch out full length. And Kitty Callie sleeps up there with me part of the night. She doesn't stay there all night, but she'll cuddle up next to me for a while and that's nice, especially in the winter. She's she she's like a heating pad. <laughs> she makes it warm in the winter. Uh, but their conditioner's going off after a while. But it, it's comfortable right now. But it's going to get cold before I wake up tomorrow. It would be awesome if we got raptured out of here tonight. Except I want to be awake. I want to be awake and see it as it's happening. I guess if I get raptured out of my sleep, I'll wake up real fast when I go flying through the roof of my house. That's going to be awesome. I can't wait for that day, and it is very soon, y'all. I don't know when, don't have a clue when, but I know it's soon. According to everything going on in the world, it's got to be soon. I, d I listen to... Israel Prime Minister Netanyahu's speech to the United Nations again today. I think I've listened to that speech four or five times. It's a good speech. And I back that guy 100%. I back Israel 100%. And I hope y'all do too. I'll let y'all go. We got a 23 minute video here, so. I got my contact lens in, that's how come I can see the clock on the camera. <laughs> and I'm going to sleep in them tonight, I'm too tired to take them out. I, matter of fact, I'm going to go brush my teeth and go to bed. I don't even know what time it is and it doesn't matter, I'm going to go to bed whatever time it is. Alright, you, all, all of you are very much appreciated. If you know anybody crazy enough to be interested in my channel, tell them about the bald-headed redneck. Tell them to come hang out with Stan. The more the merrier. And if anybody that's not saved hops on here and listens to the end, guess what, friend? I want you to be saved. God wants you to be saved. God wants you to be saved so much he sent his son to die for you so you can be saved. His son, Jesus, did all the work for you to be saved. There's nothing you can do except believe on what Jesus did. So believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. God bless you all.